many practitioners know, the New York Tax Department focuses a lot of its enforcement efforts on state and city residency issues. In fact, the state employs around 250 auditors to handle 5,000 or more residency cases that are opened up each year. These cases generate probably over $200 million in revenue annually. But you know, not many of these residency cases ever actually get to court. And never, never has a substantive residency issue been before New York's highest court. Of course, that all changed in early 2014. May it please the court, my name is Timothy Noonan, counsel for Mr. Gayed in this case. The issue in the Gayed case involved New York's statutory residency test, where a person can be taxed as a resident of New York if they spend more than 183 days here and if they maintain what the statute calls a permanent place of abode. The issue in the Gayed case focused on that second requirement, whether Mr. Gayed maintained a permanent place of abode in New York. And you know that issue has been the subject of much controversy over the years. The tax department has taken the position that pretty much any property that a taxpayer owns can meet this test, even if they don't really use it as a residence. So, you know, a commuter who had access to investment property or to a place they didn't use, those persons could be deemed residents. We even handled a widely reported and somewhat infamous case where a taxpayer's rarely used vacation home was enough to qualify him as a resident under this test. But this issue came to a head in the Gayed case. He lived in New Jersey, but he worked in the city, so he met the 183-day requirement, but he also owned and maintained an apartment near where he worked in the city. But this was his parents' place. He only stayed there when they asked for his help, and even when he stayed there, he slept on the couch. The tax department, though, they said this was enough. He owned the place, he maintained the place, he had access to it. So in their view, it didn't really matter that he didn't use it as a residence. We disagreed, of course. We argued that the statutory residency test implicitly requires that the taxpayer be using the place as a residence. Or to put it another way, that in order to be taxed as a resident, the taxpayer actually has to live there. They gotta reside there. And after years of litigation, New York's highest court agreed. At the oral argument, in fact, the judges made clear their uneasiness with the tax department's broad position. There's got to be some rhyme and reason to it. What I'm saying to you, what makes sense is, if you don't really reside there, that's the ultimate test. The problem, I'm, one of the problems I'm having is you, keep, you, you seem to say this is a simple, objective test. That the, 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 the legislature wasn't worried about fairness. They were worried about drawing a nice, clear, objective line. But when we press you about the facts, you essentially say the tribunal can come out any way it wants. It, it, it has to mean an abode, I think. It was intended to mean an abode that is available for your use. But it just doesn't, it doesn't make sense. It, it, it. And what the court said, they said that in order for an abode to be a permanent place of abode under this statute, there's got to be some basis to conclude that the place was utilized by the taxpayer as a residence. And the court it flat out rejected the position that maintenance to the place and access to the place is all that counts. This was such a great victory for taxpayers because it's more in line with the purpose of the statutory residency law, which was to tax people who really lived here. Don't expect these residency audits to subside now, of course. There continues to be an influx of cases. In fact, at any one time in our office, we're handling 200 of these cases. So the issue isn't going away. But you know it's been rewarding to win such an important case in such an active area. And it's also personally rewarding to do it for a guy like Mr. Gaya, who only found himself in this mess because he was a good son and he wanted to take care of his parents.